Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World Daily with me, John Jordan. And the daily news I'm looking at today is the daily activity of the top five blockchain games. So we do this every month. We look at the uh, the top games and see what big trends we're seeing in the blockchain game space. I should point out uh, all the data is from DAP Radar. And also should remind you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. We spend a lot of time looking at the daily news from blockchain games um, and, and playing a lot of blockchain games. So if you're into that space, please do subscribe. Hopefully we will keep you informed and entertained. Um, but here we have um, what's been happening. This is for uh, what we call H1, so the first half of 2020. So obviously July, no, sorry, June gives us the uh, full six months of the year so far. So um, as ever, a quick explanation of what the graph is about. So each one of those dots is a day. So we obviously we have um, the date, the days across the uh, horizontal axes. And on the vertical axis, we have what we call daily active unique wallets. So we can think of that as an analogy of, of users, but we can't track users. All we can track is wallets interacting with blockchains. So uh, we would assume this is an overestimate because um, some players, for various reasons, will play with multiple wallets. They could be doing that because they're running bot farms. They could be doing that just because they have multiple accounts. We don't worry too much about that, um, but just to... Uh, Realize this, this will be an overestimate to some degree. Probably will depend, um, the percentage of overestimate will depend on the individual games and the individual blockchains. Um, I should do a video about that at some point, but that is not this video. So, so we'll, we'll treat this um, as is. So what we can see here is, is, is what has ha happened during the year. So starting in January, um, and we can see we have five games here. So um, the current most popular games in blue, we have Splinterlands, which is a card uh, collection game running now on the Hive blockchain, used to run on the Steam blockchain. We have in red, we have Crypto Dynasty, used to be called, at the start of the year, it was called um, EOS Dynasty, because it was running on the EOS blockchain. It's now coming to Ethereum, um, although this date at the moment is just for the EOS version, um, but now called Crypto Dynasty. And that's a mo that's kind of a mobile, um, mobile based, so sort of kind of idle game. Um, in many respects. And we have prospectors in yellow. So the little two there means we're actually we're counting um, two versions of the game here. So it's running on the EOS blockchain and the WAX blockchain. We, we're, we're combining those two together. Um, then we have in green, we have Upland, which is a mobile uh, kind of uh, mon monopoly type uh, kind of building land ownership game running on the EOS blockchain. And then finally in orange, we have My Crypto Heroes. Um, which is a kind of RPG, Japanese RPG, uh, running on the Ethereum blockchain. So we have five games running across a you know, different selection of blockchains. We have Splinterlands on Hive, Crypto Dynasty currently on EOS, Prospectors on EOS on Wax, Upland on EOS, and Microprotectors on, on Ethereum. And we can kind of see at the start of the year here, um, we had these these kind of four games. So Splinterlands, Crypto Dynasty, Prospectors, and Microprotect Heroes were all roughly around the same um, kind of level. Certainly into in January, we start to see some development as we go into February, March. But in January, they were all about 4,000 daily active unique wallets going on there. So so much of a muchness, as we, we can see clearly as the year goes on, we see um, a kind of separation. So um, we see Spinterlands um, kind of has, has pretty much maintained much the same uh, level of, of players every day and, and increasingly just in in June has accelerated away. Um, we have Crypto Dynasty had this, had this kind of weird kind of peak and then it kind of went down again and then it went up again uh, and, and actually has stayed pretty steady since um, April really. So for the last three months, it's been about between four and 5,000. Prospectors um, launched about 4,000, kind of has gone down over the first two months and then stayed about 3,000. Remember that split between EOS and WAX. Both of them actually have roughly the same sort of user base. I think the reason this has happened, um, well, we'll go into that later. Um, <laughs> then we have My Crypto Heroes started about 3,500, 4,000, and then they've seen this very strong decline. Um, now about 500, so that's the biggest loser over the six months. And then we have Uplearns, which is a, a fairly new game. It did have some kind of low level of usage here. It was in beta there. That was kind of beta testing until until March. And then really in 
May saw quite a big uptick from a thousand to two thousand, and is now sometimes um, about two thousand five hundred. So um, let's have a look. Um, actually, let's um, let's make things a bit easier uh, and get rid of the dots. So in this graph, this is exactly the same data. What I've done here is what we call a trailing thirty-day average. So this is averaged um, each day is averaged over the previous 30 days. So this is kind of like a, like what, what the, the kind of um, long term or the, the month long trend. So we, can, we kind of lose some of the some of the up and down volatility and we can see see some of the trends a bit a bit uh, more easily, which is why we use this sort of graph. So spin plans we can see um, being pretty steady uh, and then we have this very strong uptick. So what's happened with Splinterlands is it was on the Hive blockchain on the 1st of June, it moved to the, sorry, it's on the Steam blockchain. On the 1st of June, it transitioned to the Hive blockchain. So there's a little, little kind of decrease as it did this transition. But as soon as it's hit the Hive blockchain, it seems quite strong growth. I think that that's two reasons. Um, one, I think people who have played Splinterlands previously are now kind of getting back into it, what we call being re-engaged because they're like, oh, it's kind of, you know, maybe they forgot about it. Maybe they got bored. Now they're like, let's try it out on Hive. It works exactly the same actually on Hive as Steam. Um, uh, but but I think you've had a re-engagement. And also because now um, Splinterlands is, is now clearly the, the biggest blockchain, most popular blockchain game and and is kind of being marketed as such. I think kind of um, people who are interested in blockchain games are now kind of coming in and trying it out as well. So I think there's two reasons why this is going up. It is worth, Splinterlands is worth checking out if you've not played the blockchain game. You can just log in with an email and a password. You don't need any crypto. You can pay... Um, in the game using PayPal. So so you can also pay with crypto, but but you don't need any of those things. So, so it's quite a good entry level into blockchain games. So Crypto Dynasty, um, a bit of a kind of wave, um, a slight kind of decline in, on this 30 day trailing average. Um, we'll see what happens when it goes live on Ethereum as well. Um, very Chinese based game. So I don't think many people in the West are playing this. It's a mobile game um, and, and, and a little bit kind of grindy running on EOS. So very much based around token, token uh, dynamics and, and, and economics so we'll see um, obviously there's a lot of people in China so this could go up a lot but I kind of see the dynamic um, I'm not quite sure whether coming to Ethereum will will increase its audience very much particularly with Ethereum at the moment um, being quite congested and gas fees being expensive but we'll see I mean it's pretty crypto dynasty um, has pr proven itself to be you know to, to be able to run you know a couple of thousand more than a couple of thousand daily active unique wallets for for you know a long period of time now so i don't think it's going to go away anytime soon prospectors i think what we're seeing is in december we saw the wax version of prospectors launch there was a massive spike then um, and now the decline we're seeing is kind of what we what we see with kind of people churning if you've been playing the game for a few months any game not saying prospectors is this particular game but it's quite grindy it's quite economically based and i think after a couple of months people just kind of um, naturally go and play another game uh, or, or have enough. So it's, it's sustaining pretty pretty regularly, 3,000, which is good. Obviously the third biggest blockchain game. Um, so um, we will have to see kind of what happens there. It looks like to me this is just going to kind of maintain um, at this level for a while. I can't see it going rapidly up and down very much. Not the case for My Crypto Heroes. So My Crypto Heroes for um, the longest time was um, actually the biggest blockchain game. So if we go back into 2019, um, uh, my crypto heroes um, was over four thousand at one point. Daily active unique wallets. So what's happened here is we can see in April and May in particular, we've seen this massive decline from over three thousand to about you know under a thousand. This has happened because the gas price, which is the price you pay on Ethereum to get any transaction through, has gone. Um, it's got very expensive because DeFi, the, De the decentralized finance, DApps are getting really popular, and people there are maybe you know if you're putting a thousand dollars into a, a DeFi DApp, you're happy to pay five dollars maybe gas fee. If you're playing My Crypto Heroes and you want, want to buy a, a $10 NFT, you don't want to pay $5 <laughs> for the gas fee. So we've, we've basically seen this total collapse um, in audience purely due to what's happening on the Ethereum blockchain and people don't want to spend the money um, to to play the game. We, we have seen this previously, but we've seen the high gas fees now for a couple of months. Um, previously, we saw it for a couple, you know, maybe a couple of days. And, and uh, when the gas fee went back to normal, the audience started playing again i'm not quite sure i don't think we're going to see that this time because it's just been so long and people's habits change and if you haven't played the game for two months um do you immediately come back to it so this is like a warning sign of some of the problems around um use, using blockchains um that you're not in control of the basic uh platform obviously in in the traditional games if you know, if you're making a mobile game and, and apple banned you from the app store a similar thing happens <laughs> so not just blockchains but um 
blockchains are not a panacea for solving problems, um, as my crypto are finding out. Um, and then also we have Upland here. So Upland, as I said, is a mobile-based game. It is actually available through the Apple Store and the Google Play Store. Um, it is it is running on the EOS blockchain, but it has is quite centralized as well. So it uses an in-game currency, which isn't a cryptocurrency. Um, I think we'll see more blockchain elements of it as as the months go on. Um, but at the moment, it's, it, you wouldn't say it is. It is quite accessible because it's not particularly decentralized. Um, but because it's mobile, um, people can access it quite easily. Um, and it is interesting that of these games, um, so Splinterlands and Prospectors and my uh, and my Crypto Heroes are available as browser games. But also my Crypto Crypto Dynasty and Uplands and my Crypto Heroes are are also available as mobile games. And in fact, Uplands is only available as a mobile game. So it is interesting to see how the different platforms play out. Uh, and each of those things have, running on mobile brings problems that you're dealing with app stores, um, but it does give you, you know, much easier accessibility to, to hunt, you know, hundreds of millions of players potentially. So that's where we are going. Um, so, you know, some positive things, some negative things. So with all these trends, um, you wouldn't say there are particularly industry-wide trends. They are trends driven by the individual games that are people are playing. So you can see something like Minecraft Heroes, they've not changed anything they've done, they've not made the game worse, um, but they're being kind of hit by something else that's happening on the Ethereum blockchain. Splinterlands, it's growth, partly because it's swapped blockchain, so it's re-engaging people, but partly because it's just a really good blockchain game. And, and as that word gets out about it, um, it it's, it's attracting a bigger audience. So thank you very much for watching. This is Blockchain Gaming World Daily, where we take some of the daily news and kind of dig into it and, and say why it's important. Hope you enjoy it. Um, please do subscribe to the channel if you do. But thanks for watching this video and hope to see you again soon.